see this face? It's a serious face. I'm really serious right now. Before we get into anything on TV Talk, I have something very important to tell all of you, and I have a very important person to come in and tell you what it is. Sir? <laughs> Look, I need to warn everybody. There's a lot of Game of Thrones leaks and spoilers out there. Someone at HBO accidentally uploaded the episode. Cody! So uh, if you choose to watch it, that's okay, all right? We all can't make decisions for you, but don't make the decision for us. Don't tweet us. Don't put spoiler pictures in the chat room. Some of us like to watch the episode when it happens on Sunday. It builds up anticipation, right? Right, John? Yes, Ken. You've never really watched Game of Thrones, right? What? Anyways, ha hashtag Tower of Joy. Uh, don't spoil <laughs> anything for us, all right? Beware. <laughs> the night is dark and full of spoilers, all right? Hey, all right, thanks, Ken. Grace, that's a nice shirt. Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Ken Knapsack uh, live here on Collider TV Talk telling you, guys, if you're going to watch the Game of Thrones, don't be a jerk and spoil it for people. Nobody likes spoilers, especially when it comes to Game of Thrones. Oh, you're cool. You can watch it. Tell all your friends about it. It's not cool. Okay? Sunday nights is for thrones. Saturdays are for the boys. Sundays are for the thrones. <laughs> Do you get it? You got it? Good. Who else is here? The lovely Grace Hancock, hey! oh, our mother of ginger I'm dragons. Here, the mother of Look ginger at her. dragons. Welcome to yes. Sensual Wednesdays here on oh, Collider TV Talk. Sensual Wednesdays. <laughs> I, I do declare. I do declare. And also here for her animation on a Sensual Wednesday is Miss Emma Five. Well, how do you do, J <laughs> Josh and Grace? <laughs> I do declare. I do declare. It is a fine day to be here in the Collider Video <laughs> Studios. <laughs> Oh, I said, <laughs> it's the, a the lovely whole day here in Southern to be Georgia. Like, well, oh, oh, I do. That young man commenting on my shirt. <laughs> oh, 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 I do declare. That is one <laughs> hell of a shirt. Did you get that at the local Four Center store? I, I'm just going to keep awkwardly moving my hair and like make it really uncomfortable. I'm like, yep. uh huh. Nailed it. Nailed it. I did, yes. The Four Center store. Nailed where it. Where you can get yours and move your hair off your boobs, too. <laughs> Uh, before we get into it, uh, Central should, we, should we tease some, before we get into a Central Wednesday, yes. should we tease uh, Twitter questions? Are we going to take those today? Oh yeah. yeah, and I tweeted it also, but tweet me your Twitter questions, uh, hashtag Collider TV Talk, hashtag Ginger Mother of Dragons. Ginger Mother of Dragons? Ginger Mother of Dragons? <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, what's first on the docket here, Grace Hancock? <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> um, all right, so Fringe star Kirk Acevedo will be joining season Nailed six it. of Arrow as villain Ricardo Diaz, a hardened ex-con hellbent on taking over Star City's criminal underworld. Boom. Yep. Boom. I, see, here's the thing. I First of all, I love Fringe. Uh, this actor has been in love more than Fringe. just Fringe. Mm -hmm. uh, but th here's the thing. If it is some sort of mystical kung fu dude... Right. That like harnesses his chi like Iron Fist, but it's like Star City's version of Iron Fist, and his fists aren't exactly glowing gold. They're like right. more of like a bronze glow, and <laughs> sure, he can like sure. he learned it in prison from an ancient master while buried underground in solitary confinement, and now he's mystical. We're going back to seasons three and four, and that's the last thing I want. Now, if he's some badass dude, I know like the origins there, but if sure. he's some badass normal dude. All for it. Yeah, okay, you want I, somebody in based in reality. Correct. Sure. Right. I would will say though, I wouldn't necessarily hold your breath on the oh. grounded in reality. Thanks, Emma. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to crush your dreams, Josh Lukuga, <laughs> But I'm just saying that this Dream is, Crusher Five. It is now sad. It, yeah, Wednesdays. it is. It's now sad Wednesdays. That you know this character once again. You are dealing with. Somebody who is a mystical kung fu master. Not to say that they couldn't take that and do something a little grittier with it. And sure. I don't mean gritty in like just physically making everything dark and having lots of death and destruction. I mean, again, more grounded in reality. Sure. But I don't know, it, it is the CW and we've seen them go the mystical route on Arrow before with little success. So I'm not you know my necessarily part, optimistic. My favorite part about Arrow and uh, these shows with human beings who get punched in the face, not like Flash, because right. Flash is the Flash, right? And Legends of Tomorrow, they all have some sort of superpower. He's never, ever bled or had a bruise on his face or body. <laughs> That's in true. five seasons of television, that. he's never yeah. bled. He's not like he's been cut a couple times, and you've seen it like in torture scenes, sure. but from actual street punches, from dudes punching him in the face, he's never, ever bled. Not in his lip. He's never had a black eye. He just shows up to the mayor's office. And he's like, I beat up 46 dudes. Took a couple shots in the face, but Dennis Still said it's all fine. Still looking great. <laughs> uh, 
Th- 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 that being said, my suspension of belief. Wi- hey, listen, if season six goes back in the Damien Dark realm, I'm going to be a little upset. What's next, Grace? All right. Well, coming up next, we have <laughs> Nip Tuck alum Julian McMahon has joined the cast of Hulu's new original series, Marvel's Runaways, in the role of Jonah. We don't know a whole lot about his character, but we know that Runaways is going to be the story of six diverse teenagers who can barely stand one another, but who must unite against a common foe, their parents. Mm-hmm. And you would imagine, obviously, that Julian McMahon would probably be one of, one of the parents. Sure. Because, th- as Grace stated, he is going to be pivotal in their decision yes. to have this rebellion thus forming the runaways this to me i feel a lot more optimistic about me than too. the uh kirk acevedo casting for okay. arrow and as you say kind of maybe going a hokey mystical sort of route because yep. everything i've seen out of runaways thus far or heard about it i'm i, I feel good about yeah. this show you know yeah I, i'm down i think this is going to be another opportunity for marvel to redeem somebody that was previously in another marvel tv movie marvel tv is legit like a ski slope like yeah lift back up yeah lift back like yeah oh man daredevil jessica jones iron fist in humans runaways let's see coke and dagger let's see like what could possibly happen because from what I understand, like uh, the vessels, I think I saw a tweet yesterday. Get your tickets for IMAX of Inhumans, and somebody subtweeted, "No thanks." <laughs> <laughs> I felt kind of terrible for Marvel. I was it's like, after all the stuff that's coming out, but yeah. I loved Nip Tuck. I was a huge Nip Tuck fan. I know it was the the most fake, ridiculous show in the history of TV, but it was sure, early it was FX, right? Well, it was and, early and, FX. And Ryan Murphy, and I know, you know? Yeah. yeah. And he was fantastic in it. I mean, he, listen, ladies, if you don't think that man is handsome, there's something wrong with you. Or dudes, <laughs> or whoever thinks people are handsome yeah. that look like that. The smolder works for me. Yeah, yeah he's smolder. very smoldering. Very, very smoldering. Uh, I think it's great because if he does play a pivotal role and he's like the leader of the parents' evil thing, great. totally makes sense. I buy him as a bad guy 100%. Yeah. Because wasn't he a bad guy in um, a Fantastic Four he movie? He sure was. I he was it. Dr. Doom. I knew it. I knew it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Who didn't mean to bring that one up? So that's a so subject. Ooh. Ooh. But, but like yeah. I said, this yes. is going to be another opportunity for Marvel to redeem somebody. Yeah. So obviously, we had Chris Evans in those movies. Now he is Captain America. Yeah. So yeah. I think that he could go from Doctor Doom to a really charismatic, interesting, complicated villain in Runaways. Yes. I mean, did, did any of us ever expect to see a man that screamed, Flame up! to be. Captain Friggin' America, because nope. I sure Most did. certainly not. <laughs> All right, Grace, what's next? Also, last night at the Emmy panel, we had a This Is Us, uh, another kind of little uh, panel. I'll repeat myself. Um, <laughs> allow myself to allow repeat. Allow myself to repeat myself, myself. on sensual <laughs> Wednesdays. Um, so he didn't. we didn't learn a ton from this. This is a really emotional panel. I watched it, and I was like, oh, God, all the feels. Um, but we're going to be, he dropped a couple little hints. We're going to be learning about Beth and Randall adopting their child. Yeah. We're going to be learning the backstory between how William and Jesse came together. And also, your favorite thing, there's going to be more singing. <laughs> Yes. That was Nothing the s- first thing that struck my attention, by the way. I, I know, like, and oh, I was like, oh, gonna Josh singing? is going to be so mad. <laughs> well, I will say when I read it and I saw it, there will be singing, I was like, fuck, I ruined my show. God dang it. I also love how with this panel, there were all these warnings on articles that were written about it, all the coverage saying, there's major spoilers for season two in here. And I'm like, no, it just kind of says yeah. these people are going to keep living their lives. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's I like know. The, the plot moves on. It's true. And again, I think with This Is Us, the plot is secondary to... How many times I cry. Yeah, right. that, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the human condition and, and, and the accurate portrayal of human relationships and their complexities mm-hmm. and their ups and downs. And again, it is a series that jumps around in time and we still don't know... I wonder if the mystery of Milo Ventimiglia, and I'm probably totally Ventimiglia? mispronouncing his name. Ventimiglia. Ventimiglia. There you go. Uh, his death, I, I sort of wonder if that's going to become like the who shot JR of... 100%. <laughs> of this is yeah. But that was one season, and then, right. you know, Bobby came out of the shower, yeah. and you're like, oh, it was a dream, yeah. right? Which, if we get to like, and we were saying this before cameras rolled today, if we get to the the, the season finale, of, or the series finale, like season seven, and it's just like, my love to me, he's walking down like, drive by. Oh, like, wait a second. He got hit, killed in a drive by shooting. 
what? Like we, because uh, you would imagine it's some sort of like slow death or sure. like he's saving somebody or like a kid falls in the ocean and he swims out, but the current takes him, but he's able to get the kid back to shore. I don't know. What I'm saying is, if it's an if it's an anticlimactic death, that has to be keeping Dan Fogelman up at night. It's like this death has got to be up. <laughs> they just yeah. randomly like leave a sponge and like a totally normal like <laughs> appendectomy, yeah. and then he like gets an infection and like he so, left like, the sponge in. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> 70s We're terrible hospitals. human beings. Anyway, um, yeah, I, again, this this is us is probably definitely my most anticipated network show mm-hmm. of like returning. Yeah, show yeah, 100%. definitely up there. Uh, so you know, anything this is us, I'm cool with. All right, what's next, yeah. Grace? Um, so next, we're going to chat about episode four of Manhunt Unabomber on Man Discovery Hunt. Channel. Um, I this is really warming up for me. This yes. is warming up for me. I think the dialogue is still very clunky. It pulls me out of it. And also I'm very much a sound person. We talk about this. I'm always like, I love the music in that trailer. Yeah. I love I'm a big audio person. Okay. Uh, the dialect so like Soderbergh stuff. I like. yeah, I, lo- I like I'm big on like or sound Soderberg design. Right. I'm like, ooh. Um the dialects are rough. The dialogue is is rough, but the linguistics kind of stuff really gets my nerd brain going, and I'm I'm really I know, warming up to so a lot of it. It's so interesting in a show wherein the dialogue isn't super strong that a lot of the analysis of text within yeah, the work of fiction it's kind of a is weird dichotomy. Great. Yeah. It's almost like reading a textbook, right? Yeah, like it's not going to keep you. It's not like reading, you know, Stephanie Meyer. Uh, did I just make a Twilight reference? Yes, you did. I was going to say, is I was trying to think Twilight of an author. I also suggest that Stephanie just... Meyer is a good writer. Let's uh, maybe okay. go George R.R. Martin. George, okay. It's not like reading George R.R. R. Martin, right? <laughs> You're, but, but a textbook is supposed to inform you. And this show is basically Stephanie kind Meyer. of like yeah. a sex. It's a sensual textbook. It's On a, a sensual yeah. Wednesday, the show is a sensual textbook. Yeah, that's a, that's oh, a man, very we're good killing parallel, it today. I yeah. think. Because, again... It's interesting because it is on Discovery Channel, and so mm-hmm. there is a part of you that just assumes this is going to be a factual piece of work, and that's more or okay. less what this is. It's kind of a docudrama. Yes. Sure, yeah. Yes. just a dramatic portrayal of actual events. Okay. And I think because the actual events are so interesting that even though, no, the show doesn't have the greatest dialogue and some of the performances are a little static or a little... Cliche, tropey, tropey sure. exactly. It still makes for interesting television. Yeah, I I find that the way they intercut the actual news footage from the time period really cool, into right? the narrative to be incredibly cool. Yeah. yeah, agreed. And like actually having the Bob Guccione, the guy yeah. from Penn, that's oh, that's dang. him. They're using him. Yeah, you know? that's not an actor. So yeah, uh, really, really cool. And again, it goes back to the thing of. This was one of those things that we didn't know much about, mostly because the FBI kept it clo- so yeah. close to vest because sure. this guy was a madman. Um, it, it is, it, it's something. What's what's really cool about it is that it's one of those shows that makes you go back and start reading it. But then I don't want to read it because I don't want spoilers. But it's <laughs> I, actual <laughs> published information. Yeah. Like we know he gets caught, but yeah. I kind of don't want to know. And I, yeah. I know it's kind of fun to watch it unfold with all of these. It guys. is. It is. And but it's also fun as the audience to know that they're gonna get him eventually. We know how it ends. We know who the Unabomber is. And yeah. now. On the show, at the end of this episode, it's very much implied that they're a good step closer to finding out who he is as well. Because despite the fact that their grand plan to have everyone right. who bought the Washington like Post surveillance this by one everyone in San right. Francisco trailed, now the sis- his sister in law read the article Literally, over in Paris yeah. and called her husband and said, hey, maybe you should read the <laughs> hey, newspaper. Remember your brother Ted? <laughs> He's weird. Yeah. I knew I never liked Ted. Yeah. Yeah. Ted I weird. mean, it is legitimately the definition of putting all your eggs in one basket of surveillancing a newsstand in yeah. San Francisco. It's sort of being like, well, I'm going to go to a singles mixer with nobody who's single, yeah. but maybe <laughs> the one, one person is looking to cheat. The one I, thing I will say that I great, didn't Josh. That's like, I, I think that's sort of along the lines of singles mixers and cheating is yeah. the storyline with his wife being jealous of the linguistics professor that so, they kind of so introduced cliche. in this. It was, it's so cliche and so unnecessary because initially when she shows up at his apartment, it seems like they're he's cool. He's beautiful mind. Yeah. But then, yeah, he's beautiful minding it, but she just kind of goes in and starts replacing it with pictures that their kids have drawn and, yeah. and making sense of it. And she's being very supportive and cool. And then she shows up to the office and meets this other woman and is like, yeah. Like, just like, this stuff <laughs> Bitch, is you've got long hair. Fuck you. So what? unnecessary. I get that a lot. Yeah. Like, um, oh, she's hot. I'm jealous. Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was kind of like aggressive. Also, like the linguistics <laughs> professor was so 
not memorable to me that the first yeah. time that we met her yeah. with like glasses in the meeting when she's like, excuse me, I know the answer in the midst of all these old men fighting. Yeah. I literally didn't even make the connection that it was her. I was right. like, who that? Like, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then later when it was like another flash forward, I was like, oh. It's, yeah. it's honestly the Dumb and Dumber scene where he's like, we had a beautiful day. She touched my leg. Kill him. Yeah. It's kind of like, that, that's how Elizabeth yep. Reese overreacts. Like, all right, well, all take right, it easy. Well, Again, yeah. not sure why she keeps getting cast and stuff, but that's mm -hmm. just me. Mm -hmm. All right, Emma. Yes. I believe it's time for Grace to do it. Emma, Emma Mation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. There was dancing that happened behind that logo that was on the screen, so you couldn't see it. Oh, man. So, <laughs> that was great. Uh, interesting news. The second half of the first season of Little Witch Academia dropped on Netflix yesterday with basically no announcement whatsoever and on a Tuesday which is a little bit <laughs> going confusing. up on a Tuesday yep just going up on a Tuesday um did is this the, is this related to my hero academia no it is oh. not no okay. this is a series from studio trigger uh, David and I talked about the first half of the series a little bit on TV talk back when we were in our weekly format cool. and it's basically Harry Potter but only girls oh. um it's oh. it's a really really cute series it's studio trigger they have a really cute animation oh, style gosh. and the there oh. were originally two animated shorts that were the first of which was produced independently by Studio Trigger, and then they did a Kickstarter to do the second film, Little Witch Academia, The Enchanted Parade, and then because the, the two shorts were so successful and popular, they went on to create this whole series. Now, yeah. the series itself acts as if the shorts haven't happened, which I don't mind. I actually really like the way they retold the story in the series. Um, and even though Netflix released the back half of season one as season two, it was a 25 episode season when it aired on TV in oh, Japan. Yeah, okay. And it's just with the way Netflix distributes things and the model that Netflix is moving towards, which is that they basically wanna have new content to release every single week. So they are, again, moving things into being in shorter seasons. Okay. It does bring up an interesting conversation about the history of anime because so far, Netflix has only distributed series. They have gotten sole distribution rights for a couple of series, Little Witch Academia being one of them, and another notable one being Seven Deadly Sins. But there's now some conversation going about whether anime might actually become Netflix productions. Like Netflix would actually produce some anime series specifically and exclusively for Netflix, which a lot of anime fans are grouchy about, but you guys, it's a really good thing. Animators in Japan get paid shit. Most of them have to have other jobs. Yeah. If they were producing stuff for Netflix, Netflix has a lot more money and they do global simultaneous distribution. So it really could be a good thing. Right now it's a little frustrating when Netflix gets the rights to something because something like Crunchyroll or even Hulu will simulcast things. So basically the same day it airs in Japan, it'll air in the US. But Netflix won't distribute until it's also dubbed and they'll drop, you know, 13 okay. episodes at a time. Okay. So it, it, it's an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We will yeah, see. And Netflix licensed a whole bunch of new series. So we will we will see what the, the there should future. should just be like a Netflix anime. Like you should, that should just. Yeah. And I mean, this is the thing is, guys, I listen, I have my Crunchyroll premium subscription. I, I love getting my anime direct from Japan. But at the same time. Netflix, it's, it, there's a lot more people who subscribe to Netflix than yeah. have Crunchyroll subscriptions, so it's it's not a bad thing. Okay. Uh, What's next? Well, and speaking of Crunchyroll, uh, one of my favorite continuing series, Little uh, or My Hero Academia, yeah, all the academia. That's why I was confused. Yeah, I know. Right. It's very confusing. I just like things with the word academia in uh -huh. them, I guess. But uh, I, uh, as I you know. should. This was a great hero, a, a great episode of My Hero Academia. Again. We're focusing on all of the students doing their internships, and this whole episode was about one of my favorite characters, Froppy, who is a little girl <laughs> whose magical, whose superhero powers. Ironically, is, my nickname in high school. Is she, oh, Froppy it's McCoo. adorable. <laughs> Froppy she literally McCoo. has frog powers. She can basically oh. do anything a frog does. Yeah. So she can jump really far, and she has a like crazy frog tongue. But yeah, it was really <laughs> cute. It was her doing her her internship. Under... Who's making out with Froppy under the old bleachers there? <laughs> hey oh, uh, I mean, they so. wouldn't even necessarily. Necessarily no, because you know the tongue could just go oh, down. Whoa, and, you know. hey sexual, Emma Wednesday. Have sexual Wednesday. <laughs> sexual Wednesday. Spoiler uh, alert! No, Froppy is adorable, Woo. and it was a really cute episode about her and uh, her her sort of hero sensei, who is a, a seal. His power is basically that he can do whatever a sea lion does. Ah, uh, so. yes. Yeah, so, so he can like, like nap on the nap beach. on the beach. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's, he's I want to be that superhero. Her, That's me too. Uh, but yeah, and then finally, uh, interestingly. This does tie back to uh, Little Witch Academia because Little Witch Academia is produced by Studio Trigger and one of the uh, storyboard artists on this new Cartoon Network series, OKKO, OK is an artist 
who uh, co-founded Studio Trigger. Okay. So um, it's kind of related, even though this is an American production. Uh, so OKKO OK is by Ian Jones Cordy, who worked on one of my favorite Cartoon Network shows, uh, Steven Universe. Ah. And interestingly, it's sort kind of, of looks about like Steven Universe. Yeah, yeah. and it's kind. It's another look at more mundane superhero kind of stuff. Okay. Um, just It's an American show, and there, there's a little bit more of sort of kung fu movies and like an 80s vibe in Ooh. it. It's really fun. Uh, okay. But yeah, the main character, K.O., again, just really wants to be a superhero, and the way he does that Sounds is, like a common theme in anime. And, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in animation in general, but again, yeah. it's it's a, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's really cute. It's really fun. I've watched the first, I want to say, five episodes. They're only 11 minutes, okay. like Steven Universe oh, nice. and Adventure Time. Oh, um, wow. But yeah, it's it's got a good message about helping people and uh, Ko's optimistic to the point of being extremely naive, but it's really endearing. There you go. Yeah. And I think we all need a little optimism in th these times yeah. of what's going on. A little optimism, yeah. some more hugs, some more believing you're a little, superhero. I feel a little warm and fuzzy right on the inside on, just little, hearing you talk about it. Like he basically works at a bodega for yeah. superhero stuff. See? Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect for a central Wednesday. That's some Emma Emma Mation. Emma, Thank Emma you, Emma Mation. Five. All right, let's move on. Grace, uh, do you have some tweet us questions? I some, do. Some and I have one chosen because we have spoken about this off camera. Yeah. And I don't know what kind of person I'm becoming. And yeah. I'm gonna oh. read the question and you'll find out why. Okay. At Mrs. Grace Face, what are your thoughts on John and Danny's relationship after these episodes? Do you see them getting together? See. Ooh. <laughs> Everybody keeps vouching for incest in Game of Thrones. Like, oh, well, the Targaryens banged each other for years. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't make they it They should okay. keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, okay, it, but this is what I'm saying. Like, I absolutely am a, I'm a sicko because I absolutely want it to happen. I'm like, get that D, Danny, and I want to see it. I'm wow. sorry. Grace. I want them to wow. hook up. Grace, this show is all about changing the past. Yeah. It, she doesn't burn down you Westeros. You don't want to see them hook up. I no. mean, uh, from the point of view that they are both very attractive people, sure. Sure. But they're... they're if fatigued. you get turned on by a, a nudity scene between Jon Snow and Danny Targaryen, you're fucking yeah, weird. It's, it's her nephew. Okay. okay. It's her nephew. <laughs> This is very Oedipal. This is a totally Oedipal thing. Yeah. The Jamie Cersei thing at this point is just torture porn. <laughs> Danny oh and Jon Snow are supposed to be better. Because yeah. when Jamie kills Cersei, because that's my, my theory. Right? Uh, there's a lot of people out there that, that think that's going to be the thing. You're going to be like, good, she deserved it. Even though they were banging because it's not love, it's incestual weirdness. Jon and Danny are actually, regardless, <laughs> not, it's, no. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> Emma Fife. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to see them get together. But I have to admit that on the last episode, I was a little conflicted because the two actors had very good on-screen chemistry. See, there was a little bit there, though. Yeah, I agree see? with you. There's so that's much wrong. gray that's area. That's the point of it. They're supposed to have on-screen chemistry. For the way I am. <laughs> but there's gray area, and I'm. I don't know what to say. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do yeah. one more. Twitter. We have one more yeah. that's let's, a little less incestuous. The on this and I just think this is funny. Um, uh, from Joe Frick at Mrs. Gray's face, aliens have invaded, and you can show them one show to convince them not to kill us all. What do we show them? Oh. <sighs> well, don't show them anything like uh, like Westworld where they're killing robots because they're like, well, we are like robots. <laughs> right. And they are going to kill us? No, we are going to kill you. I don't know why. I love that they're aliens. German. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Uh, would, uh, were the German robots? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would I would show them a show like Friends. They all get along. They have a good time. Yeah. It's not as the most diverse show in the world. So maybe like a parenthood, like something where they they all get along and it's really nice and like the world is is butterflies and roses and and everything in between. Yeah. Uh, don't show them, you know, uh, a, like Jersey a Shore, NCIS. <laughs> oh, the kid was raped by you know, like <laughs> Jesus. The alien should kill us after an episode of NCIS. So definitely don't show them this episode of TV Talk yeah, where I admit to why. <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I feel like you definitely want to show them something that shows that people are good yeah. and the world is worth saving. And I think it's just because I'm real stuck on those Cartoon Network shows. I've been and I was watching like, right we can now. show but them like one a, of those. Like an OKKO OK or a Steven Universe, I think are both really great examples. I of think, like if you sh like if you showed them Big Bang Theory, they'd be like, well, they're learning too much. Yeah. They could come up to space and kill us. No, no Big Bang Theory. You show them something that's a little dumber. Yeah. Well. Eh. Dumber is subject to interpretation. Sure, sure. <laughs> a little less physics. In yeah, the, I'm just saying they might yeah. think that and, those and more, actors know physics. And more <laughs> about humans caring about one another. Yes. And, yeah. 
Yeah. Emma Fife yeah, nailed right. it. All right. Uh, that's Twitter questions. <laughs> I'm going to do a little pick of the day. Pick of the day. <laughs> pick of the day. <laughs> you can pick the Rachel Cut in Friends or Lucille Ball's Fantastic Curls. What do you pick? Yeah, this is not difficult for me at all. I would 100% pick Lucille Ball's curls. Okay. Because I have dead straight hair. Ah. I have dead straight, fine baby hair. And <laughs> I always kind of wanted curly hair. So that's she not, wants the, she wants the curls. not difficult. Not Grace difficult Hancock? for me. Yeah, no, I was actually, I'm gonna, I was going to go with uh, Lucille Ball too because she's a gingy and I love her. But my hair is actually pretty curly, but it's not that curly. I mean, if it's that short, it yeah. would be, but... And listen, She's it's perfection. Like, it's like I think both of those the, uh, those two women oh, at the yeah. time of television, absolute perfection. I know people are you're comparing Lucille Ball to Rachel. Let it go. They're both comedic. They're both funny. Yep, but yeah. Lucille's the best. Like, yeah, wow, Lucille like, Ball yeah, is. Like, wow, wow, yeah. No, totally. Wow. Yeah. That's my that's my Rachel. Yeah. It's not that great. Oh, <laughs> alrighty then. We're gonna get out of here. That's TV Talk on a sensual Wednesday. Before we get out of here, uh, Emma Fife, where can the good people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at my name, Emma Fife, E M M A F Y F F E. Join me later this afternoon over on Hyper RPG for Adventures in Fiefdom. That is my solo streaming show. We are going to continue our adventures in the world of the Fife game theme. Dream Daddy from Game Grumps. Uh, it's real fun. I'm Right now I'm testing the waters, deciding which daddy I want to date in earnest. Yowza. <laughs> well, that's, Mrs. Grace Face. That's Grace something Hancock. that I will most certainly be checking out. And uh, <laughs> sorry for making it weird. I'm Grace. You can find me everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. Or in a cave with her uncle. Who knows? <laughs> I'm Josh. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube every Monday night. WGN Movies for America. We're here live every single day, 11 a.m. PST only on Collider Video. We thank you guys for watching. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.